Knock, knock, is this thing on? So I'm being an idiot, not engine. I meant transmission. Transmission, we're here about the transmission, not engine. Hey, my name's Adam. Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. You've seen now on the channel, we've changed the transmission fluid in two Audis. One is that one, the uh, 2013 B8 RS5, and the other one was in a B8 2010 S4. Same transmission, slightly different model, so probably slightly different tuning, but identical transmission. It's the DL501 0B5. It's an S-Tronic seven-speed DSG, which stands for, and what does it stand for? Hang on, I wrote it down. That's right, direct shift gearbox. Okay, anyway, what I'm gonna show you today is how you actually look up what Audi has already told the American government. I guess it's a government website we're gonna go on. Anyway, what Audi have already told is potentially wrong or common faults with this engine. Knock, knock, is this thing on? So I'm being an idiot, not engine, I meant transmission. Transmission, we're here about the transmission, not engine. You can do this for any car, and I'll show you how to do that at the end, but I wanna go through the five or six things that I've discovered that uh, Audi already have told the government effectively, and us, so we should already know about this. And I think one of these things is actually what might be wrong with my gearbox, which is why I changed the oil, and maybe I didn't need to, of course I did. It's a DSG, it needs changing every 30,000 miles or something silly. So anyway, we're gonna jump straight into it and I'll show you on the computer what that looks like. All right, so here we go then. So what I found was then on the Rostec website, which is a tool that I use for a lot of things at Audi, there were these links down on the page all about the seven speed S-Tronic direct shift gearbox, the DSG 0B5 or DL501 as it's otherwise known. Well, those links take us to this government website, the NHTSA. If we go through this, you will see, here's the first one. So this is what's known as a TSB. Sometimes they're recalls, sometimes they are not. So in here, basically then, there is a drivability concern. You can see which car it affects. So in my case, being a model year 2010 S4, it is affected. You can also then see which part of the vehicle is affected. So you scroll down here and it talks about harsh shifting of multiple gears, either seven to five, four to three, two to one. This may happen just during one of these shifts. A bump is felt after the vehicle comes to a stop. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm feeling. So anyway, long story short, this could be the issue. So you can read through this and it will talk about the solution, in which case here, it's actually a software update that's required. Now, I don't have any way of updating Audi software. If you do know how to do that, I haven't found any way yet, let me know. But I think this might be a dealer thing. But what I can do is go in using Rostec and actually check for the new software version, or at least what version I'm currently running to see if I need the new software version. I won't do that in today's video, I'll save that for another video, but you get the idea. So in this case, it's a software update. What else did I find though? So this was the second one. This affects 2013 to 2015. Now, my 2010 might not be affected by this, but because I've got a 2015 as well, it probably is. So we'll check, bump, felt just after the vehicle is brought to a stop. Hang on a minute, didn't the 2010 have that? Okay, another software update. Fine, I can look into that. What else have we got? This one here, here we go. So 2010 to 2013, that affects the, the B8. Gearbox malfunction message. Oh, this has been everywhere. It even gives you the DTCs. So rather than Googling and searching on the web, you can come here and see if DTCs relate to a particular issue that's already known. In this case, the following message appears. It might come up with these things. The technical background is a poor internal contact area on the circuit board will lead to faults. You've heard about mechatronics failures. This is what it's all about. So it also says oil additives can cause a plastic circuit plates to delaminate causing contact loss. That's why it's actually really important to use the Audi DSG oil. So service, it talks about how to service, check the DTCs, clear the DTCs. Then it talks about removing the mechatronics, replacing the circuit board and reinstalling. The repair manual, I'm gonna do another video all about the repair manual that is available on the web for a really inexpensive price that you can get an official repair manual, but that'll be in another video. 
You get the idea though, so this was talking about warranty. Well, most of these cars are out of warranty now, but then it also talks about the diagnostic time and what it should take to do. So if you're ever curious, if you ever take your car in and they say they've got to perform one of these services and it's not covered by warranty, you can come and check what they should be doing. So again, really useful. So this is another one, another gearbox warning light. So 2010 to 2014, this might actually, yeah, okay, so this supersedes a previous TSB. So sometimes you have to be careful, there will be later TSBs. In this case then, gearbox malfunction, probably the same DTCs as the previous one. Let's have a check. So what have we got? DTCs, P17D8, P17, no. So this could be a different failure for this transmission. So maybe they learned a little bit more, who knows? but it's worth coming in here just to check. So again, what was the cause, technical background, incorrect driving mode sensor module. So this is a complete different failure. So it's probably not superseding a previous one. This is actually a different module that needs replacing. Service, it talks about what to do, remove and install, and then when replacing the sensor module and its wiring loom must also be replaced. So again, really good information. Okay, this one looks a little bit more scary. This one is, oh my goodness, that's stripping down the gearbox and cracking the case. Maybe I won't do this one just yet. I'm not scared. Come on, I've done rod bearings on an M5. Anyway, get the idea. What else have we got? We have got gearbox warning light on with different DTCs, I believe. Let's just check back up to the top. Oh, is this a duplicate? It might be a duplicate. It is, but there is, it, this is probably one where it supersedes. So again, history, 2016, 2014. What have we got over here? 2012, 2014, maybe it's not. So different DTCs? No, very similar. Ah, scenario two. No, very similar. But it's, yeah, okay, it must supersede. I'll look into it more later, but you get the idea, right? Um, leaks from transmission. Oh, here we go, another one. Effects 2010, so yes, definitely affects mine. Ah, yes, this is the one I spoke about in one of the videos. There are leaks that are caused from a cracked pan, so you can see that crack in the oil pan, and the source of it, if I remember correctly, is, yep, here we go. If the leak is around the oil pan, you, when you take off the oil pan, you look for these signs that a bolt has actually backed out, and here we go, there it is from the actual mechatronics unit. And so that ends up, I believe, cracking the pan. I haven't read it in detail, but I haven't actually come across this issue on my cars yet. One thing to note is on the cars where the filter goes, I think these two are the ones that are normal for where the filter actually just rests on the pan. So you can ignore those, but any others that you see, that's when you wanna start checking your bolts. So there we go. If you wanna learn any more about this awesome transmission, there is a link here, which I'll include down in the description below. And this website goes through all the details of the transmission. It's got pictures, it's got diagrams, it's got videos. The video is actually pretty cool. It will show you the inner workings of how this transmission works because there's effectively two transmissions inside here. That's why it's called a dual clutch gearbox sometimes, which is why I always get confused. But anyway, there are two effective transmissions in here with two clutches, and this shows you how everything works. Won't go through everything now, but if you're interested, come back and watch. So how do we do this? Let's check this out. You can see here, I've got my VIN already populated, but we're going to nhtsa.gov. What does it stand for? Do, 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 do. National Highway Transport Safety Association? Who knows, not important. What you do is you come in here and you pop your VIN in. So you click go. It basically says, okay, yep, we found it. There are no unrepaired recalls. And that's where I was talking about earlier. A TSB doesn't necessarily mean a recall. This also means though that the system, it has been logged that whoever did do, if there were any recalls, um, did actually log it that it was repaired. So that's all good, but that's not very useful. I wanna look into more information and you can. We basically come down here, where is it? I've lost it now. Ah, learn more. I wanna look for more information for this vehicle. So I could see the safety rating, not really interested in that right now. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Uh, recommended technologies, no, no, no. Recalls, no, no, no. Complaints, <laughs> yeah, you can go and look in what everyone else is complaining about. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that right now. But 
If I click on this tab, I see the recalls. There are no recalls found for this car. That's actually a good sign, right? That means it was a car that was fairly robust. Good job, Audi. Investigations, no investigations, don't need to worry. Manufacturer communication, this is what it's all about. You can see there are 526 reported things that Audi has told the government about this car. Now we are looking for, where's the transmission? D -d 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 -d. Uh, it's hidden somewhere if I remember correctly when I came in here. Is it under engine? No. Engine and cooling system? No. You must see it. If you see it, shout, comment below. Um, powertrain, that was it. So under powertrain, you can basically come through and see everything that they have reported. Um, what's this one? Diagnosing the clutch plate. This one is bulletin contained repair instructions for when this DTC. So there we go, straight away. We have found another way to look up DTCs. Bullet contained instructions for diagnosing transmission leaks. Bet you this is the one we've already looked at. Uh, one associated document. Boom, there it is. Scroll down. Yep, we've already seen that one. There are 72 reports on the powertrain that you can come in and browse and understand what else might be wrong with your car. If you've got a particular symptom, you can come in and take a look. It does take a little bit of time, so maybe do it on a lunch break, but you can check out things like brakes. You can check out things like the structure or steering. It's got fuel system. It's got other equipment. It's got a lot of other equipment, actually. Wow. Um, engine, engine and cooling. It's really interesting to go through this, but you can do this, like I say, for any vehicle. And if you struggle getting a VIN, there are plenty of VINs out there. I'm sure you'll find a VIN, you know, for a vehicle that you might be interested in looking up details on, or maybe it's a car that you're looking at purchasing and you want to find out more. Great website. Let me know what you find. I want, you know, comment below with the scariest thing you find on your vehicle. So there you go. I really hope you've enjoyed watching today's video. It was a ton of fun making and I learned a lot. I don't know about you, but hopefully you'll find it useful and you can do that trick for any vehicle. Check it out, see what you can find. Obviously I haven't searched every vehicle, but I'm sure you'll work it out. So I really hope you've enjoyed watching today's video. In this video, we might get to 100,000 views, which would be amazing. So I really appreciate the support guys. And uh, yeah, like I say, thanks for watching. Have a good day.